Welcome to a tutorial on the fundamentals of Crosspoint 7. To get started, first we're going to need to log into Crosspoint 7. So the login screen is going to look like this, and to get to this screen, you'll just follow this link https colon backslash backslash cp7.hostaccess.com Now your username is just going to be your first and last name, no spaces in between. It's going to come out in full caps, that's just how the system works, so don't be alarmed. Uh, your password, uh, password life is 90 days, minimum length is 8 characters, requires one number, one mixed case character, and one special character. The first time logging in, it's going to be something like welcome one, two, three, any number. Now the system is going to be M C K E A N C P. So that's McKean C P. Validation field uh, frequency will be field. Remember the login information if you want to do that and login. Next, we'll be learning about our user basics. So after logging in, you'll be brought to this screen. And this is how Crosspoint organizes its applications. So in this first column here, you'll have your domains. Uh, that represents the operational home for Crosspoint, and it'll always be visible. So you have accounting, projects, people, materials, and administration. So if you choose a domain, let's say accounting, that'll bring up the next column, which is your modules. Um, this represents the operational discipline within a domain and you have general ledger, multi-currency, accounts payable, accounts receivable, cash management, and fixed assets. So now if you choose a module, let's say general ledger, that'll bring up the next column that will be your application groups. This represents the type of work done within a module and that's organized in this processing order. Setup screens, processing, reporting, utilities, and interfaces. So by choosing one of these application groups, that then brings up your applications. Um, this is where the work will be done in Crosspoint. And uh, you can do data entry, editing data, inquiry, viewing data, creating records, printing reports. That'll all be done in your applications. Now there are a few different ways you can navigate through Crosspoint 7. The first is the method that I just showed you. Another method is to see what you already have open by clicking this little icon here. That brings up all the applications that you have open in the background. You can easily access them. You can also use the Browse Applications bar, which you can type in the name of an application, uh, and it'll bring up relatable applications based on name. Now, there are a couple different toolbars that you want to be familiar with when using Costpoint. The first is your general toolbar. This will be located on your home screen. Uh, and that will include save, which allows you to save your data to the database, save and continue, which allows you to save your input without clearing the screen, refresh, where you have the option to clear all, refresh all, refresh subtask, and refresh documents. Clone allows you to duplicate records um, with changes required only for primary key data. Lookup allows the user to query for data stored in different cost point tables for the current record being constructed. Default action runs processes within the application. View action and report status it does exactly what it sounds like it does. You can view your action and report the status of it. Execute runs processes within the application. Page setup uh, displays the page setup dialog box where the report layout can be specified. Print Setup displays the Print Options dialog box. The user can change printer options there. Preview displays a preview of the current report. Print prints a report using the default settings. Reset View uh, returns objects within an application to their default positions and returns the current applications to the table or form view. Messages uh, displays your messages and errors window and Workflow will display a menu to run workflow associated with the current applications. The Application Toolbar is a toolbar that's displayed within every application. You can see that right here. That allows you to create a new record on the screen in either form view or table view. Copy allows you to copy a selected row but not its child data located on dependent levels. Use Duplicate Record to duplicate only one level of a record. Delete allows you to mark a record for deletion. The next time data is saved, 
Crosspoint will delete from the database any row on the screen that are marked for deletion. You can also use undelete to reverse this method. This display box here shows you how many items you have open. So you can have multiple forms going at once and this shows you where you are within those forms as well as how many you have open. You would use this toggle button here if you've created a new record by cloning an existing record. This allows you to switch back and forth between the new record and the existing record. These buttons will take you to the first or last form that you have open. And these buttons will take you to the previous or next form that you have open. Table view allows you to change the display form for the current record from table view to form view. You will use the query button to populate an application with a result set of database records that are maintained by that application. This button will also display the user's saved queries. You can use this box to select or deselect a current record. This button maximizes the user's record to show it in large format on the screen. And close will exit the current cost point application. Selecting close from this toolbar will not exit cost point. Now the next thing we'll be talking about is user setup. Now, cost point allows you to customize how you use their program. So you'll notice these three buttons in the upper right hand corner. The first button is log out, so that will log you out of cost point. The second button allows you to select a company that you're going to be working in. And the third icon is the one that will allow you to customize your user setup. You click manage at the bottom right and that will bring up this page. Now within this page, you can change your identification by changing your username. You can change your user information by changing the company that you're in. You can change your password information. Uh, you can change the default report delivery options, change your phone number, and change your local ID. The table view will be the view of the applications when you open them up. Now you'll notice some repeating items. First will be this red asterisk. That identifies an item that is a required field. The second will be these purple tinted boxes. Those are fields that you cannot edit. Now you'll notice that if you click on some fields, this little magnifying glass will pop up. By clicking that, that'll bring up another window that allows you to select items from within this new window. And you'll see in this new window it makes it very easy for us to select an item, click OK, and then it adds it into that field. And you'll notice this in a variety of different fields throughout the form. And again you'll notice that these purple fields are uneditable. Next you'll notice that this little date icon here opens up a calendar where you can choose a date. By clicking these arrows you can navigate through the month, the year, once you find the date you want, click OK, and it'll enter it into the field. By clicking this exchange rates button at the bottom of your screen, it'll bring up a window that will allow you to automate different transactions while switching from different currencies. This voucher totals tab brings up a window where you can see what kind of totals you're getting through cost amount, sales tax, etc. Using queries will help you narrow your search within a menu. You can find the query button at the top right hand corner of your screen. When you click it, you'll open this window. In the Find tab, you'll see Search Criteria. Depending on the records to be searched, various criteria is presented to help the user filter the search. The criteria includes, is equal to, begins with, or contains. Now below that, you'll see these three buttons. Count displays the number of results that were returned based on the query criteria. Save Query returns saved queries. Reset clears the current selection in the criteria dialog box. Now below that, the very bottom of the box, you'll see Find, which executes the data searched based on the parameters entered in the search criteria, and Close, which exit the Find Query dialog box. In the Query tab, you'll see Query Condition. This allows the user to create a search criteria using field values, filter conditions, and nesting capabilities to search for records. 
and again at the bottom of your screen you'll see count, save query, and reset. The query button executes the data search based on the parameters entered in the search criteria, and again close will exit the query dialog box. The sort tab allows the user to select any field on which the search should be sorted by an ascending or descending order. This also allows multiple search criteria. And lastly, the Saved Queries tab lists existing saved queries by users or administrators. Page Setup allows the user to edit how the page will be displayed when it's either printed or downloaded. You'll see the Page Setup icon at the top center of your screen. By clicking that, that opens this window. Within this window, you can select different reports, change the layout, portrait, landscape, mixed, you can change the font, you can edit the paper size, and you can also edit the margins on the page. Lastly, you can add a logo to your page. When downloading or printing your data forms, the first thing you're going to need to do is select the print icon at the top of your screen. After selecting that, you open this window. From here, if you want to print your page, select Local Printer. Then enter the printer information if it's not already provided and click OK. If you want to download your data page, in the print options, click one of these three buttons, print a file, download, or email. For download, we'll go to file options, then choose how you want to download it. You can download it into a PDF file, an Excel file, a doc file, or a PPT file. Then you'll simply enter a file name of your choice and click OK. You can also email the file using a basic email setup, or you can archive it. 